I'm going to um, try to make up time and go quickly uh, here to um, talk about from the perspective of the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management, a center at University of Rwanda, um, which was uh, developed or the, the concept for it was um, supported by UNESCO and worked with stakeholders in the country um, to um, develop it as a knowledge management center to function as a consortium of governmental and non-governmental institutions. Um, and then the stakeholders also identified that it should be located at University of Rwanda because of the programs that our Vice Chancellor mentioned this morning that were developed from 2006 with funding from the MacArthur Foundation. So it was an aim to develop capacity in the country to train uh, in country for biodiversity conservation. And um, why have a center like this? Well, we know we've been talking about the great importance of biodiversity um, in the world and in for Rwanda. And it was His Excellency the President Paul Kagame who originally proposed a center of excellence during the first International Biodiversity Conference in Kigali. Um, and also, as Marshall pointed out, um, we do have limitations in um, what species are here in the country, where they are located, and also the capacity to do research on those species. Um, I always tell people I think about one new species is found a year in Rwanda, but it's found and the research is done on it outside the country. And we currently aren't, don't really have facilities to maintain uh, voucher specimens, and nor are a lot of the data maintained here in country. And uh, as we've mentioned, the data are scattered. Um, and we don't have a strong linkage between uh, science and policy right now. That's the, what we are working on step by step to get there. So the core functions of the center, I want to tell you very briefly, are these three core functions, research and monitoring, that includes biodiversity informatics and education awareness raising and bioprospecting. Those were also decided through the stakeholder process that UNESCO supported. Um, and um, our mission, our, our goals are really centered around making biodiversity uh, information available for the country. So I like to say that we serve the government, we serve NGOs, we are here to make sure that biodiversity can underpin um, the work that we are trying to do here with sustainable development. And so I want to focus my talk on a few things that we have been doing in the center to um, move towards or work with this biodiversity data revolution that was mentioned by the permanent secretary. And um, I just want to say very briefly that uh, Matthew from Sanby, he mentioned that um, the Center of Excellence is mentioned in NBSAP um, as, a, as a key, playing a key role in um, serving this biodiversity information. I always have had the perspective that um, I want to let that roll out with the Biodiversity Information Management Forum, with the stakeholder discussions, to really determine what is the best institution that should be doing that. And the center, again, is, is simply here to serve and support that process. So for us, it's more important that it gets done and that biodiversity is data are made available. And um, the, the first, uh, did I just, yeah. So the first thing that we have been doing is, is um, trying to understand what is a biodiversity information system. I could ask you, raise your hand if you really know what it is. Um, I didn't know when I started this process. I really had to get up to speed on what is a biodiversity information system. What is biodiversity informatics? So I think you've heard a bit of, from Michael, uh, Matthew, about um, what that is. But um, just very simply, it's a way to get data available. And we have been um, trying to do that um, through this uh, very small steps with partners, working with partners. I can really say that we got into it first with Sanby through this African Biodiversity Challenge um, where we were tasked or challenged to mobilize biodiversity data in freshwater ecosystems. And so that information system is making information available. I think I'm not going to go through this very in detail because you heard a lot about it in Matthew's talk. Um, um, but these are various components, and you saw his perfect examples there, so I'm going to skip through this. Um, I also, because I had to do a lot of studying to understand what this is, I kind of like this slide, just showing that it's just these folders of 
uh, but virtually of different um, data sets or kinds of information that can go together to inform policy. Um, and for us, we also learned that it's very interdisciplinary. So we have been working with people from IT, we have been working with um, biodiversity experts, we have been working with um, statisticians and GIS experts. I've been reaching out to a lot of different um, people in different domains to help us um, get this going. And um, we are starting with Mukungo Catchment with JRS Biodiversity uh, Foundation funding. So we were advised, and I think it's very smart, that we are starting very small, even though Mukungo Catchment is large, but we are starting small just with this system um, to do all that, to mobilize the data. And as I think you've seen already this morning, it's not easy to, to find the data, to mobilize the data. Some of it is not digitized. Um, some of it doesn't have geo-reference locations. Much of it is outside of the country. So we are working on this system first um, to really help us to understand what it is and to make sure that all of our stakeholders, all of you, know why it's important and make sure that you are able to use it because it's really not useful if you are not using it for your needs. Um, and we are looking at it as a biodiversity atlas essentially and we hope to include a citizen science component in that as well and that's also where we hope to partner with um, different institutions here. Um, you've already heard about the first um, biodiversity information management forum. Um, Marshall talked about that but I just want to say that it was just so exciting. Many of you were there and it was um, you know as Matthew showed over South Africa doing this for 10 years. Um, I think it has a tremendous potential to bring us all together as data providers and data users um, of, for this information. Now I want to mention a couple of other projects we have because it happens that the projects that we are working on right now really come together in a synergy about mobilizing biodiversity data. So this morning the Vice Chancellor mentioned the National Herbarium um, was uh, gifted to us when we happened to get a grant. We were working with uh, partners in the uh, Institute of Museums and also um, NILDA and, uh, and NILDA was currently holding the herbarium and when we got the grant they said well why don't you go ahead and manage that. Um, so that was a big task and we've been getting up to speed with that but we are digitizing it so eventually those data will be available and we in the process of doing this found there are thousands and thousands of records of plants in Rwanda located outside Rwanda that we plan to link with um, the National Herbarium of Rwanda. Um, and then, and I think I can say through this process we are also learning about creating the information system that will host that and then make it easily accessible for users. Um, and then we also have a couple of um, really exciting projects with REMA. I think these are very innovative projects because REMA approached the center and said we would like to partner to get impact research on interventions that we are managing. One is in the Gishwati Makura landscape. Um, I think they could have gone and worked with um, international consultants, for example, or a company to do this work, but they were really committed to building research capacity, working with postgraduate students, and we are working together um, to do research. And again, this is getting data out there, getting data available to meet policy needs. So this also feeds into the information system. And um, the, very briefly, the, that project is looking at um, improving ecosystem management through different interventions like civil pastoral, agroforestry biodiversity conservation and the um, yeah I'm gonna skip through this just quickly that we are supporting 16 students with REMA and the LaFrec project who are doing their research um, and it's really an interdisciplinary project they're coming from two colleges and several different programs um, and then the the other project that we have with REMA is ecosystem-based adaptation. Matthew mentioned this is another um, big initiative that's happening in many different countries. And again, we um, were so honored to have REMA come and approach us and say we would like to work with the center and with. Um, postgraduate students and we didn't keep it locked into you know master students in biodiversity program we wanted this to be interdisciplinary so now we are working with 10 students from different programs across the university again to gather data and information about how these interventions are working 
um, I'm going to skip through that to get to another um, project that we did, a very small project. This was a tiny amount of money. I think we had 3,000 euros. But we um, worked with some different partners to look at um, biodiversity indicators and buffer zones. Um, we think this is a really important project because we have very little information about buffer zones, and yet they can play an incredibly important role in um, conservation and protected areas. And the data that we collect will feed also into the biodiversity information system. And this was with a partner, the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences, which, by the way, also has a lot of data from Rwanda um, in their collections. And then another project that we worked with with REMA and with UNDP was um, creating an inventory of ATK. So that is um, traditional knowledge associated with genetic resources. And in uh, this project, we also have documented the distribution of information. So this is linked to biodiversity and traditional knowledge associated with biodiversity. So um, these are just some of the projects that we are working on now that um, for, for us in the center, we're excited that it's all coming together on this common synergy about mobilizing biodiversity data and making it available for policy and decision making. So thank you very much. I'm going to end with that. And yeah, thank you. Um,